icon series. So children, we have completed the lesson part and it is time now for us to do something with the grammar part. Okay, something to do with the grammar part. Now, uh, I'll write a few sentences on the board and I'm trying to write something about a park. Okay, a park. So the first sentence I would like to write is, there is a small park. near my house okay there is a small park near my house there are many plants in the park The plants have a lot of flowers. A lot of kids come to the park in the evening. <clears throat> They play a lot of games. Hmm? <coughs> An old man chaos the plants there. <coughs> okay. So one, two, three, four, five, six sentences I have written over here. There is a small park near my house. There are many plants in the park. The plants have a lot of flowers. Uh, a lot of kids come to park in the evening. They play a lot of games. An old man cares the plants there, right? So in these six sentences, we know is is a verb, are is a verb, have is a verb, come is a verb, play a verb, cares a verb. Right? These are the verbs in the sentence and they are used in the simple present tense form. So in which forms are the words, are, are these verbs used in the sentence? In their simple present tense form, right? So we know is, am, are, was, were. These are the B forms, isn't it? They are the B forms and has, have, had. They are the yes have forms. Okay, so is, am, and are are the be forms, and has, have, and had are the how forms that we use in English. And here is, are, am. These are the present tense forms. Has and have are also present tense forms. So we have learned that earlier, isn't it? Yes. Now, we need to learn that this can be used uh, uh, in negatives also. Negative means, uh, yes, not. If we have to add not to a sentence, then we call that a negative sentence. Okay. For example, this is a book. Okay. We say, this is not a book. So in the first sentence, we used is as it is. So this is a positive sentence. Okay. In the second sentence, we added a not to that. Okay. 
and then it becomes a yeah negative sentence. So how do we make a positive sentence negative? Yes, we can change a positive sentence negative by adding not. What should we add? We should simply add not to a uh, to a sentence to make a positive sentence negative and that not has to be added after the verb okay so when we add not to the verb then we get a negative sentence okay so the same way we can uh, add not to the be forms also okay so we can frame the negative of uh, uh, simple present tense even though we use uh, do forms or have forms we can add a not to that and make their negatives right now <clears throat> when do we use simple present tense when do we use simple present tense so what are the situations where we use a simple present tense so Simple present tense is used for expressing habitual actions. Habitual actions means what? Yeah, something that we do regularly. For example, we can say, I drink a glass of milk glass of milk in the morning huh? I go to school by bus we play in the ground in the evening we play football in the evening huh? he teaches us maths right so usual or habitual activities are expressed using Simple present tense. So simple present tense is used for expressing habitual actions. Then universal truths. So why are the universal truths? Yeah, something that is true throughout the world. Something that is true uh, true throughout the world are called the universal truths. So say for example, uh, they are also called the general truths, okay? General truths, because it's common everywhere. For example, uh, the stars shine at the night. The stars shine at the night. Can we see any stars in the daytime? No, isn't it? So we say the stars shine at the night. The stars shine at night. The stars shine at night. We use simple present tense to express planned activities. Planned activities. For example, uh, we have uh, different celebrations at the school, you know, like uh, sports day or uh, uh, children's day or uh, republic day celebrations. Huh? So we say the program starts at 8 o'clock, isn't it? The program starts at 8. Means it's Planned. We have already planned it that uh, the program will start at uh, 8 o'clock. Alright. So these are some of the situations where we use a simple present tense. Okay. So what is the first one? To express a habitual action. Habitual action means something that we do usually or uh, regularly or called uh, habitual actions. Then second one, universal truths or general truths. So something that is true throughout Wherever we go on this earth, it has to be true. Okay, for example, milk is white. Everywhere milk will be white. Earth pulls everything to its center. Earth pulls everything to its center. We call it gravity. Isn't it? 
Wherever we go, the earth pulls it to the center. Huh? Water flows down the slope. Can the water climb up the slope? If there is no motor there, it cannot, isn't it? But if there is water, it can come down the slope. So such kinds of things which is common everywhere and anywhere throughout the earth is called a universal truths or general truths or general facts. Third one, planned activities. Something that we have already planned. Okay, the school reopens on June 3rd or June 13th. Huh? It's a pre-planned one. We know this before even uh, during the holidays itself they do it, isn't it? Yeah, the schools, the school reopens. The school reopens. Or if there is a program, then we say, we have already planned it. Okay, the guests will be coming by 7.30. All the arrangements will be made by 7.45. And uh, the students also will be settled. Everything gets ready. And at 8 o'clock, we start the program. It's all planned one. Then we say, the program starts at 8. Okay. So, simple present tense is used to express habitual actions, universal truths and planned activities. Clear? Fine. Now, we have got some activities that we need to do based on a simple present tense. We will do that and then we will go on to the next part. Okay? Okay. So, we have already seen why we use what is the structure of simple past present tense and why and where do we use them. Isn't it? Yes. So, now... We have got an activity part based on a, the usage of a simple present tense. Okay. Look at the following pictures and complete the given sentence to express what Rohan does every evening. So look at this picture. Here is a boy and he is a Rohan. And this picture actually shows what he does in the evening. Right? So the first sentence, Rohan is a good boy. He returns from school at the 3 p.m. every day. So, somewhere here he returns. Okay. He returns from school at the 3 p.m. every day. He dash his clothes after returning from school. So, after returning from our school, what do we do? We remove our clothes, isn't it? Do we have a remove here? No, we have a change. <sighs> he changes his clothes after returning from school. What does he do? He changes his clothes. And after changing his clothes, what is he doing? His then he dash face, washes face, then he washes face, then Rohan dash snacks after that, and after that he eats. Rohan eats snacks after that. Then uh, he usually dash TV for some times in the afternoon. He usually watches TV, isn't it? He usually watches TV for some times in the afternoon. Fifth, he dash with his friends in the park every evening. He plays with his friends. See, he's playing here, isn't it? So he plays with his friends in the park every evening. Sixth one, he dash milk after coming back home from the park. So after playing, when he comes back, he drinks milk. <clears throat> he drinks milk after coming back from home. Coming back home from the park. Then he often studies after that. He has a dinner with his parents and goes off to sleep at 9 p.m. So after coming from the park, he drinks milk and then he sits to study. He studies after that and soon he has a dinner with his parents and then he goes off to bed. So this is what uh, Rohan, a good boy, does in the evening. So he will be back from the school at 3 p.m. every day. Then uh, he changes his clothes after returning from school. Then he washes his face. Rohan eats snacks after that. He usually watches TV for some time in the afternoon. He plays with his friends in the park every evening. He drinks milk after coming back home from the park. He often studies after that. 
So, he has a dinner with the parents and goes off to sleep at 9 p.m. Right? So, I'll keep this screen the same for you for another minute so that uh, you can uh, read the sentences once again. Right? So we have just seen how we use a simple present tense and now it is a time to use the simple present continuous tense. So there is something in the name itself, a continuous tense. Something is continuing, something is going on. Okay, something is going on. And uh, when is it going on? Present. Present means uh, at the time of speaking, isn't it? Present means the time of speaking. Now I am speaking something and this is a present. And when I am speaking, something is happening. Okay. So if I say, I am writing on the board. So this is something that is happening at the time of speaking, isn't it? Huh? Or if I say, you are Listening. Are you listening now? You are listening, isn't it? You are listening and that is happening when I am speaking, isn't it? Okay. Yes. Then we can say, uh, He is taking notes. So when I am saying something, somebody is writing there some notes. Okay, so I am writing on the board is something that is happening when I am speaking. You are listening is also something that is happening when I am speaking. He is taking notes is also happening when I am speaking, isn't it? So, when do we use present continuous tense? Yes, present continuous tense is used when we have to express something that is happening at the time of speaking. Right? So when something is happening at the time of speaking, then we use a present continuous tense. Okay. So now, <clears throat> let us have a look at these sentences. So what is the verb here? Are writing. Is that it? Here, are listening. Here, is taking. Is that it? So there is something with the verb when we use them in a Present the continuous tense. What is that? Yes, we use a B form. Which B form? The B form in the present tense. We know <clears throat> is, am, are, was, were. All these five are B forms, isn't it? But is, am, are are the yes, the ones in the present tense, and the was and the were are in the past tense, isn't it? So what do we do? We will avoid that. We will avoid that and we will select the B forms in a yes, present tense form. So is or am or are plus take is a verb. It's used in its ing form. Listen is a verb. It's also used in ing form. Write is a verb. That is also used in ing form, isn't it? Yes. So what we need to do here is uh, verb plus ing. 
Okay. So, is, am, or are plus ing form of the verb is a structure of a sentence when you try to write that in a present continuous tense. What is the structure? Is, am, or are plus ing form of the verb. See, when the subject is a singular like he or uh, she or uh, it, <coughs> huh? yes. or when we say Ram is a ah, taking notes. So when we use a singular subject here, okay, when the subject of a sentence is a singular, then we use a is. Okay, and if you use a plural subject instead of you, uh, I say the students. The students are listening, or if I say the boys, or if I say they are listening, isn't it? Huh? So if the subject that we use is a plural, then we use a are. Isn't it? So when the subject is a singular, we use a is. When the subject is a plural, we use are. And when the subject is a first personal pronoun I, in the sense of me. Okay. When the first personal pronoun is used as a subject, then a, yes, that way we use a am. Okay. So the structure of a present continuous sentence is is, am or are plus ing form of the word. Is is used when the subject is a singular. Am is used when the subject is a ah, first personal pronoun I. And are is used when the subject is a plural. Right? Okay. Now we have got an exercise from this part in the lesson itself about the present continuous tense. And uh, we will do that and then we will go on to the next topic. Right? So children, now uh, we have got something to learn in the grammar and that is about a present perfect tense. Present perfect tense. So perfect means what? Perfect means what? What do you mean by present perfect tense? Okay, we will analyze it first. Perfect means all clear, isn't it? Done. Finished. Isn't it? Okay. So, present means now. So, what do you mean by present perfect tense? Something that is done just now. That's it. We have finished something at the time of speaking. We might have started it any time. We might have started it today morning and we finished it now, it's noon now. Or we started it yesterday, last week, last month, doesn't matter. Okay, so if we want to express an action, we want to express an action that we have completed just now, just before uh, we're speaking. Okay, so something that we have finished just before speaking is expressed in a present perfect tense. Something that is perfect at the time of speaking, present. Okay? So an action that is perfect at the time of speaking is expressed in a present perfect tense. Okay? So example, uh, it's a holiday. And uh, you went to your friend's house. Okay. You went to your friend's house. And when you went there, your friend was eating breakfast. Your friend was eating breakfast. So, his mother offered you also breakfast. And uh, you do not want to eat it because your stomach is already full. Your stomach is already full. And you do not want to eat anymore. So, what do you say? I have uh, eaten my breakfast. Is it? I have eaten my breakfast. 
okay or in the evening you came back from the school you kept your clothes uh, back there changed your clothes and uh, after some times your mother came and saw you watching tv okay your mother came and your mother saw you watching tv now mm, mother actually has a doubt usually you will complete your homework first and then you will go for a watching tv isn't it usually you will do your homework first and then you will go for watching tv now why are you watching tv now then uh, she will ask you and you will say what do you say i have uh, done my Homeworks. I have done my homework. Means what? Yes, you had already completed your homeworks, and now you are watching the TV. Got it? Yes. So think. <clears throat> just then, your father came. You are watching TV over there. Your mother asked it. You said, "I have completed my homework." Your father came. Your father saw you watching TV, and your father asked your mother, "What is he doing?" Okay, your father asked your mother, "What is he doing?" And then your mother says, "What? Uh, he has completed his works." What does she say? He has completed his works. So just before she said that you had completed that, is it right? Yes. So we use present perfect tense to express an action that has just been completed just before we say it. Okay. So uh, we use present perfect tense to express an action that has just been completed or just before we. Say about it. Okay, All right. Now let us have a look at these sentences once. Say, have eaten, have done, has completed. So we use have forms in a perfect tense. So which are the have forms? Has, have, had. Isn't it? Yes, these three are the perfect tense forms, right? And in that had is a past tense, isn't it? Yes, had is a past tense, so we want to use that. We want to use had in the present perfect tense form because had is a past tense. So what do we do? We use has or have. We use a has or have plus a. Uh, past participle form of the verb so what do we use there we use a past participle form so what do you mean by past participle form See, every verb has got three forms. Okay. Say, for example, we write uh, work. Yeah. Past tense is work. The past participle also is work. If we write eat, past tense is ate. Past participle is uh, eaten. Okay. If we write, if we use a play, Past tense is played. Past participle also is played. So this is what we call the V3, the third form of a verb or a past participle form of the verb. Okay, the third form of the verb or a past participle form of the verb. Right. So that is used after the have form. See, I have eaten. Has 
have i is a subject so we use have then v3 e10 the second sentence also we used i okay if i use u here this also will change into u okay so again u is plural so we have used the have have done then he is a singular he is a singular so we use the has there but after has and have eaten third form of the verb eat done third form of the verb do completed third form of the verb complete <clears throat> okay so after has have the have forms we use a third form of the verb okay so that is present perfect tense present perfect tense is used to express an action that has just been completed as we say it the structure is a has or have plus a past participle form of the verb or the v3 past participle form of the verb is also known as a uh, v3 okay so has is used when the subject is a singular we use has when the subject is a singular have is used when the subject is a plural or a uh, first personal pronoun i <clears throat> okay so that is about the present perfect tense now we have got an activity uh, some exercises are there so we will do that and then we will continue with the remaining part of the lesson right after completing about the simple present tense we have uh, learned about the present perfect tense also isn't it yes we have learned about the present perfect tense also so now we have got an exercise here uh, study the following sentences and pick out the verbs used in the present perfect tense also write them in the space provided so two sentences are given here what we need to do now is identify the verb which is in the present perfect tense present perfect tense and write them separately right I have read a part of the story that she is writing. So, what is the structure of present the perfect tense? So, if it is a perfect tense, then has, have, or had has to be used. Has, have, had, isn't it? Yes. So, this is present the perfect tense. So, we use has or have. So, I is the uh, subject here. So, after I, we use have. Then uh, where is have here? Yes, have. Read, 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 isn't it? Read, second form is read, third form is uh, read. Present tense read, past tense read, past participle read. So what is the verb form here? I have read. So yes, have read is the verb which is in a present perfect tense form. <coughs> Right now, the policeman has stopped the red car. The policeman is a singular one, only one person, right? So we have used has here. Stop, stopped, stop. The three forms of the verb stop is a stop, stopped, stop. Present tense is stop, past tense is stopped, past participle is a stopped. Isn't it? Yes. So what is our verb form here? The policeman has stopped has stopped is a verb which is in a present perfect tense right so i have read a part of the story that she is writing is a sentence in that have read is the verb that is in the present perfect tense then the policeman has stopped the red car in that has stopped is a verb that is in a present perfect tense right so I'll keep the screen the same for another minute so that you can read it once.
let us spell. Complete the following words by filling the missing letters. You may use the clues given in the box. So we have a set of six words here with the plenty of blanks inside it. What should we do? Yes, we should rewrite this word in the space given here. But while rewriting that, we need to complete these blanks also. <clears throat> okay, we need to rewrite the words but with a completing the blanks. Clear? So, dash O L dash I dash R S. What is the word? S O L D I E R S. Soldiers, isn't it? S O L D I E R S. Okay. Now the second one. L A dash 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 R. L A dash 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 R. L A D D E R ladder, isn't it? <clears throat> L A D D E R ladder. Now, third one, dash dash I T E. Quiet. Q U I T E. Quiet. Is it? Then, uh, dash dash V dash dash dash. S L dash. It's all clumsy here. So dash dash V dash 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 S L dash. So what will be the word? <clears throat> o B V I O U S L Y. Obviously. Okay. O B V I O U S L Y. Right? Now, C dash R dash U M dash T dash N dash E S. C dash R dash U M dash T dash N dash E S. Uh, circumstances. Yes. C I R C U M S T A N C E S C I R C U M S T A N C E S circumstances right now S dash 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 E four dashes are here in between that how many are here four and the word is S O L A C E. S O L A C E. Right? Okay. So the first is soldiers, S O L D I E R S. The second is L A D D E R ladder. The third one is Q U I T E quiet. The fourth is O B. V I O U S L Y obviously. The next one is C I R C U M S T A N C E S circumstances. And the next one is S O L A C E slaves. Right? So now I will keep the screen the same for another minute for you so that uh, you can uh, read the words once again. Right?